you just tap it once and you'll start to see the timer go. So, and that's the start <coughs> and stop. So I don't start yours right away just because I want to try to actually get into a space before we do that. So yeah, keep the lasers off vehicles. You want to set off car alarms. I don't like to run. Yeah, no, I never either. fun. So yeah, whenever somebody's passing through, you just lasers off. Your device. Nope, you're gonna do the work, not me. So <laughs> antenna up. All the way up. You, yep. It's not very long. So have you seen any other numbers? I have to video you. <laughs> so flip the device around where you're looking at the back of the box. Wait. 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 Stop. I have a question. What are we looking for? Like flickering? I don't see anything. Okay. Yeah. No. You look haunted. He wants us to go slower.
Slow down. Slow down. So what happens with that is it's just generating new files um, because the files for a GoPro are just giant. So at four gigs, it just starts again. I splice them all together. So you have one video. You got this.
He said, one of my people is on the ground. I have to go follow them. It's Victoria. She's in her bag digging for something. It's not supposed to be okay. And again, point your cameras one way or the other so that way you can get a view up or down the alley, either way. So you're actually good going up that way, doing your perfect. So, um, <laughs> with that said, the reason I asked for names is because people lived here. These two buildings I'm looking at right now, they weren't here. Little tiny shotgun houses. I have the full list of residents of every person that's ever lived out here. It's pretty easy to come by, but when you're looking for it, you have to kind of figure out what's going on. Um, it's from the building behind us. Okay. That's what I would call a rhythm because okay. it's just steady. Um, but yeah, good call. <laughs> but anyway, the names I commonly get down here are Benjamin and John. Sounds like very common names, but when I say people live down here, I'm only talking like two to six people at a time. Benjamin and John both lived down here in 1801. Find anything significant about Lodge Alley in 1801? No. Other than I get the same exact names every six to seven weeks. Unfortunately, during this tour, I've restarted the, the loop on week one as of two days ago. Because again, I can't pinpoint it. Um, was I expecting Benjamin and John to show up? Not really, but I never know. If they break the loop, they break the loop. So there were four different Johns that lived down here in a 60 year time span. So how do I know which John it's actually referring to? We get the same last name over and over and over again. Like Johnson. Yes, his name was John Johnson. So we do get that quite a bit. Um, What's interesting is where you're, what you're standing on. This is why I think it's actually occurring here. So you're standing on Belgian blocks. These blocks are made straight of granite. <coughs> you seem like you're pretty hip to the paranormal lingo. Limestone is said to stir up some activity because it comes straight from the earth. Granite also comes straight from the earth, and these have been here for a couple of hundred years. So they say when rock actually stays in the same space for a long period of time, it hangs on to the consciousness of memories and replays it back to us over and over again on a loop which is, they call it the stone tape theory, which is why I think we keep getting the same names over and over and over again. Um, so it's a very interesting space. I kind of lollygag here for just a minute, because again, it's not a space where we actually <coughs> answer, ask questions. The four people lived here, the Freemasons had a Masonic Lodge here, hence the name Lodge Alley. So again, we will get terms like Freemason, Mason, um, and I've gotten the term Illuminati quite a few times in this alley. Now, first off, who the hell is saying the word Illuminati on the radio? which is what you guys are listening for. Second, why am I only hearing it in this space? I'm not going to go into conspiracy theories with y'all because that's a whole nother tour. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I can't explain why I keep hearing the same terms over and over and over again in the same space. The next space we're going to go to is another alley. However, I cannot take you all the way through it like what we're doing now. Why? I've been booted out. You guys joined the annoying group with the blinky lights and the cameras and all that mess. So. We're going to be talking about Dueler's Alley, which I'm sure you know that story. Um, I tell the story a little bit differently because you're going, you're ghost hunting. It, it is going to be different based on what we're actually looking for in that space. Um, I will tell you how I got booted out of that space once we get down there. Um, however, I tell the story outside of it because it is, it is definitely an active spirit. We will get terms relative to that space for the remainder of our time once we reach the space. So it is a very strong <coughs> presence that's going on over there. It's a cool story. Um, but again, it's one of those instances where we're going to hear terms from this for the rest of the night. It's a very odd space indeed. We're cutting right on the edge of where I'm tour guide guy is allowed to take you. I hate calling myself a tour guide because we're actually ghost hunting. But I'm still telling you stories and taking you through the city. So I still follow all the laws. When we cut out of this alley, we're going to stop both videos because we don't record in neighborhoods. We're going to be cutting through a neighborhood to get over to Philadelphia Alley, just so you guys know. Um, Spirit Boxes, continue to listen. Let me know whatever it is you hear. Um, as far as the EMF readings, you're probably going to get the similar type things of what you're getting right now based off of buildings, parking meters, that kind of thing. If your device, for some odd reason, gives us a crazy spike, the past three nights, it's given me spikes I don't normally see in here. Just so you guys know. Normally I'll see like a four to six or kind of like that mid-range on this one. Um, <coughs> yeah, if you get anything above a six, I want to know what's going on. 
Um, but as we exit the alley, we're going to go to the right and see what do you have now? Among Us. Of course they're Among Us. <laughs> they're always Among Us. I love that. Um, <laughs> Who's the imposter? Earlier when you referred to this as shotgun housing, it immediately went pow, pow, pow. Oh, that's actually kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> and immediately and right after now. you said that. So, again, that's, that's an interesting response, I guess is the right term. <laughs> Yeah. Got it. Um, Chris, have you heard anything? I might have heard Ben, but it was very quick. So something I need to look for, because yours is recording. Okay, so I'm just making a note for me yeah, to look for it. It wasn't really frame. clear. Got it. Um, and I'll get, you know, some, you got to remember, your spirit boxes, the one you're listening to, are slowed down. <coughs> what color is the big red bar? Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. <laughs> We don't need Rudolph the Nose Reindeer. It just needs red. So, like, if I hear Ben Roethlisberger, I'm gonna take it. We heard a Ben. Oh, we heard, <laughs> uh, we heard Benjamin Franklin. You know, and in response to money, I'm gonna take it. Um, but again, that's the kind of things that I'm, I'm looking for. I'm going through all shit down. Because again, we never know what the message is going to be. That again, we never know what's gonna happen. Right? Because it's different every single night. I tell the same stories, but I can't tell you where it got in the past. So, let's head up to the next alley where I've been kicked out. That's super fun, right? <laughs> right Once we exit the alley. Oh, okay. Jillian's going to call me one day because she found something in the evidence and I'm not going to know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be like, hey, I'll whisper. <laughs> if somebody calls and you, nobody speaks, you know who. <laughs> yeah. Super funny. Oh, oh comedians here. Huh. Yeah. They're so funny. I'll remember this when I get my voice back. <coughs> now I turn it off. Okay. Bye bye. Of course, passing by, they didn't sign up to be filmed, and we did. So, again, I'll do my best to stay out of your way. So, again, this is a spot where. At that point, you don't need to keep me in the video, Cynthia, um, or a person. Um, at that point, we're basically looking for anomalies as we go through. But this is Philadelphia Alley behind me. Again, you're allowed to go through about halfway. It's not fair for my groups of 10 to try to work around 20 to 40 other people from other tours to try to investigate a space. However, we still stir up a lot outside of the space. This used to be called Duelers Alley. This is where the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. So, Chris, I'm sorry, this one's going to probably bore you to death because you've no, heard it a dozen no, no, no. times. I don't remember that. <laughs> 20 years ago. Okay. <laughs> Surprised you don't remember it. This is like a staple for Charleston. <coughs> um, so anyway, here's what happened down here. A doctor moves down here from Rhode Island. His name is Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. He moves down here because his fiance Amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. She has an attorney helping her out with all of this cash. The attorney thinks that the doctor is just after Amanda's money. <coughs> so he tells her to get rid of the doctor. To prove that he's not just after her cash, he comes to Charleston. The coachman that brought him into town set him up to be robbed and killed. So it wasn't a very good start to the doctor's stay in Charleston. Somebody walking by with the name Ralph Isaacs. I'm going to stop there because Ralph has the same initials as where the doctor came from. R.I. Ralph Island. Isaacs, Rhode Island. God. So R.I. has shown up for me in the past quite a bit, but I just gave you the two main characters. We need a secondary clue, so we need to know who the hell it belongs to. It's the same thing with all of the Charleses we talked about earlier. Ralph says, dude, you don't want to stay here. He didn't say dude, because this is the late 1700s. Yeah. He says, you don't want to stay here? There's a gunman inside. He's going to try to take all your money. I got some friends at 59 Church Street, where you can stay, rent a room, that. and you'll be it's safe. really bad. I have a headache right now. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Just keep me just posted. Just telling you. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Come um, on. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> You could stay at 59 Church Street, rent a room, and you'll be good to go. The doctor takes him up on the offer. The two become friends. The doctor's practice starts to take off. He becomes, no, he's making his own money now, and, I'm sorry, I, I heard a chuckle like he actually saw something. I'm like, my, my sister just sent me an emoji. Boo. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're fine. I just, when I see, like, I watch all of your guys' reactions, because that's part of what I do. Again, you're sorry, all characters just, to me, so. I interrupted. I'm you're not interrupting at all. <laughs> the doctor's making his own money now. He becomes known as the Whistling Doctor. Very cliche, but every haunted city you will ever go to has a cliche whistling ghost. Ours is a doctor. Let's just go with it, right? So, him and Ralph go see plays together, but they cannot sit next to each other because 
the doctor makes more money. He gets better seats. That's the way the hierarchy went back then. On their way home from seeing William III from Shakespeare, they start arguing over the new actress. The doctor thought she was fantastic. Ralph, not so much. It gets pretty heated when Ralph starts insulting the doctor's fiance, Amanda, back home in Rhode Island. Obviously, it gets ugly and they go their separate ways, but Ralph is from here. He has friends at the newspaper. He puts an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. It goes back and forth a little bit, but it ends up with, let's just go to Jeweler's Alley and let's see if we can just settle this, meaning somebody's going to die. So they come down, they take their ten paces, they turn. The doctor points his gun in the air and he shoots. He did not want to kill his friend. He just wanted to have the courage and bravery to show up to the fight. So Ralph has his one shot. Who do I kill tonight? Bless you. Jillian, you're already halfway Thanks. gone. <laughs> he puts it in the kneecap on the doctor, so the doctor doesn't die right away. He drops to the ground, and Ralph proved his point that he's still pissed off. The doctor's friends pick him up. They carry him home to 59 Church Street, where he dies 10 days later after refusing medical treatment. You have to remember, he's a doctor. He probably tried to bleed it out himself. They say as you walk through this alley, here's the ghost story part of the story, that you can hear the whistles from the doctor. If you happen to go down there with your voice recorders, waiting for those whistles to come through, keep in mind all of the locals know the story. <coughs> Anybody walking up and down Cumberland or Queen Street on the other side throws a whistle down the alley. I do it every single night on my way back to my garage, which is right above the Scotchman. We end there, I have to pass the alley to be able to get to my car. So I do it every single night. Me and my daughter, if she's on the tour, we race to see who's going to throw it first. So it's a little <laughs> fun game we have. Um, they also say you can hear gunshots down there, but I don't have any proof of that. So again, it's very interesting indeed. And by the way, if you're a picture taker for the people that are not locals, this is one of the most picturesque places I believe we have in all of Charleston. I love this alley, even at night. We're looking at it in the middle of the nighttime, and it's perfectly lit. So here's where I got booted out. This is the fun part of the story. At the end of this alley is a beautiful mansion. This, this alley didn't always come all the way through to this Cumberland side. It actually was cut off. So the bricks on the other side are old. Oh, easy trap. Those bricks are sun-dried bricks from slave children. We have a full handprint and fingerprint swipes at the end of that. And I would at least point them out when I was the newbie on the block, not knowing where I was and wasn't allowed to go. And I decided, you know, make sure you guys don't stop here and put an EMF or anything like that near because it, we're kind of cutting through a neighborhood. Everybody wants to put an EMF or a spirit box or something there, but I'm here to tell you that that kid is not staring at that brick in the afterlife. <laughs> well, on November 26th of 2020, my whole group decided they were going to stop outside and see what goes on with this brick. Well, it's outside that gentleman's dining room window. He's not very happy with me. He came out screaming. My daughter was on the tour. She thought it was great that dad was getting yelled at. <laughs> so, November 27th was Thanksgiving. I did not have a tour. November 28th, I got a phone call from the tourism office basically asking me to go down halfway, like what we're allowed to go, or reroute my tour. So I'm like, I'm the new guy on the block, I'll follow the rules. I decided to reroute. My tickets were much cheaper back then, so I decided I was going to tell my team, we're just going to reroute and see what happens. <coughs> we're going to wing it. We're going to see what, you know, what goes on with the next phase. I didn't even believe in the next story. I didn't tell them what we were going to be discussing either. Along the way, somebody hears the name Anne on a spirit box. I did not tell them we were about to discuss female pirate Anne Bonnie. Again, I'm not a pirates person. I'm a vampire guy through and through. <coughs> when we get there and I tell what I did know about Anne Bonnie, somebody hears the number 300. I have no idea what the hell the number 300 is, so I have to research it the next day. We were there on November 28th of 2020. Anne Bonnie's trial for piracy was on November 28th of 1720. Wow. We were there on the exact 300th anniversary of her trial. I go back there every single night, and it is a hit or miss. Some nights, we get tons of activity. Other nights, no, nothing. Oh, Absolutely nothing. And Bonnie is said to be seen all over town. So when we are there for the last 15, 20 minutes of our time being spent together, we're rolling the dice to see if she's actually going to be there. Again, very interesting space indeed. If nothing else, it is a fantastic story because since I've had that experience, I have read probably 15 books on piracy alone, watched a crap ton of documentaries, and I'm now even playing video games with pirate stories in them so I can learn more. <laughs> So again, it is crazy. I got my daughter involved with the damn games now too. So with that said, we're going to go up and around the corner to St. Phillips. Do we have any other terms that show up on the word list, Miss Dan? Do we have really? nothing? Um, I will tell you with the spirit boxes that are listening to you, so Evan and Chris, you, I've even heard songs with whistling in them as I'm telling this story. So for example, the Guns N' Roses song, Patience, is usually a lot of whistling. If you have a song, or that Maroon 5 song with all the whistling, I've had that come up here before too. Again. I can't make this stuff up. We're not walking all the way through it, so they've got to find another way to communicate, which is perfectly fine. But we will get terms wrapped around the, the whistling doctor story through the rest of the night. 
So video cameras, if you want to continue, by all means do so. The rest of the tour is, is ours to be able to free roam a little bit. We're not going to be cutting through neighborhoods. Um, but yeah, let's go up around the corner. Spirit boxes, let me know what you guys hear. EMFs, we're still coming out of the game. No majors for a little bit. You want to come back in November? No. Yeah. I have no money. <laughs> I thought I saw a uh, ghost rock go across. It's good. But I ate off could have been a bug. <laughs> oh, they're my favorite things. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to point out this courtyard before you guys all get to chill out for a moment. Yes, yeah, so you guys paid me to go to work and I'm give you a break. It's a great employer. So, with that said, the courtyard across the way, you can see the wall in the background. That's the wall to Philadelphia Alley that we just dis discussed. There's a gate right in the middle of it. That gate was the shortcut to get to the cemetery behind me. The alley didn't go all the way through. Otherwise, it have carried the dead body, the loser of the duel, all the way up to Queen Street and back down around. So, I call it the death gate. It does have a wrought iron gate on it now, um, and it always stays locked. But I don't think a whole lot of people know why that's actually there. I find it very interesting just because of the way the, the, the layout of the land, basically. So let's have a seat. I'm going to tell you guys what's going on in this corner. And it's taken me all night long to figure out what the heck that is in the truth. That's the fucking logo. I think we have a bunch coming into town right now. Oh yeah, I think yeah, so. I think, I think we do have a bunch. Yeah, of I think in. I heard that. Um, any spirit box terms that I need to know of? It does. Yeah, just Okay. Here for life. Um, I usually ask just because there's so much that comes up. So here's the funny thing. Um, did anybody else hear anything? Here for life. As soon as we walked up, before you started talking. Does that, does that show you? Oh, yeah. I have one in there. Straight across. Okay. And that was over by Philly. Um, the reason why I ask if anybody else or anything, because we have the word cold, um, the phrase cold baby has shown up here quite a few times. Here's where we get a little weird. So, every ghost tour <coughs> stops up at that gate behind me here. I see every tour go up there. Um, it is the staple of the finale of Charles and Ghost Tour. I let them have it. Here's the one. You guys are all, like, they actually have something to show. Like, they're going to show them a picture. I'm going to show you the exact same picture. However, um, you guys, the staple for you guys is to actually use the equipment and hunt for it for yourselves. So, here's what happened. Well, I guess I like to point out a few things for the non There's two different sides to the cemetery. There's an eastern side and a western side. The eastern side is if you're from Charleston, you can get buried on this side. So Charles Pinckney, the husband, and the nephew are both buried on this side because they're from here. And your seventh vice president, Calhoun, is across the street because he's not from here. So again, they shuffle him back and forth trying to figure out where the hell he was supposed to go. He ended up not being from here, so he's on the other side. So they're all going to go up there and stare at a sign that says there's no ghost in St. Philip besides the Holy Ghost. There's a reason for this. Um, and you also notice there's a light going over the cemetery that points right at the side to try to deter people from recreating what I'm about to actually show you. So the story is very short, but they make it a big long thing. 1888, a young lady dies by the name of Sue Howard Hardy. Now, we <coughs> talked about initials with Ralph Isaacs. Sue Howard Hardy. Cheesy, campy, I 
I wouldn't even bring it up. I hate bringing it up because it's so cheesy and campy, but I've seen it and heard it several times while I've been telling the story. But anyway, she died six days after her stillborn child. You get where the cold baby thing comes up now? So again, I've seen it a couple of times so far. If I get cold, I'm waiting for somebody to hear, like I was waiting for Evan that day to hear her, her baby. But anyway, <laughs> 1980. Quite a bit. Okay. Um, if it was more like as we were rounding the corner, I would say we probably have a tie. But, um, the story was, oh, 1987, a local photographer is in town. He's taking pictures of all of our cemeteries. He's putting a book together. Um, he does capture a full apparition <coughs> in one of his photographs while he's developing it himself. So it's 1987, so he doesn't have the tech and Photoshop and all the stuff we have now to be able to figure out what's going on. So he sends it to Kodak. I don't think I have to explain what Kodak is to this group, do I? Good. So you'd be surprised how many people don't know what the hell Kodak is. And I get them teenagers that look at me like, is that a bear? <laughs> like, they have no clue. Um, but anyway, he sends it to Kodak, and they don't know what's going on with this photograph either. So for guys like me, this thing is false, right? It's actual proof, it's actual evidence, but the picture's cursed. He knows that handle it even in a digital format, a cell phone, tablet, you're holding it, you're going to get the same symptoms like what we talked about earlier. So the headaches, how are you feeling by the way? Fine. Better? Good. Okay. So something must be going on right it there. It was, yeah, because it kept coming and going. When I went up against the wall, it would go away. And when I walked, turned like sideways with my shoulder to the wall, it would come so weird. As soon as she said she felt better, it's a miracle. <laughs> I don't think it's qualified as a miracle. But, but, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that's, I heard it. Yeah, oh, I yeah. got it. Okay, yeah, I just got what you sure, said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but basically, with the photograph, it's a person, uh, pregnant females as well. So, those pregnant females handling it, probably not going to have a good pregnancy. <coughs> the gist of my story. So, I'm going to show you the photograph. So please don't touch the tablet, especially the females. Um, with that said, I'm not going to be the guy where somebody had a great vacation, and nine months later, I cursed your family. So, I do this professionally. This is what I do for a living. It's not just telling you guys stories every single night. I do go into much further things than just touring and writing books about it. So, I have to get my inspiration from somewhere. So, the picture. Let's go down the line. <coughs> So basically, that's her final hurrah. <laughs> you keep bringing it around. <laughs> Every single night. Oh, that's, that's, I know. Yeah. I know what you're doing. Yeah, okay. I'm on it. So, again, that's what they are all talking about up there, and they're all going to try to take photographs of her to actually, you know, be forceful about, like, hey, take photographs around here. You never know where you're actually going to catch. <laughs> when we go across the street, and after I'm done telling you the crazy pirate story over there, for those of you with cameras um, and lasers, if you want to come back over to the side, as long as there's no other tours at that cemetery gate, you're free to do so. Because we're going to be roaming around looking for clues like what we did over at the Pinky Mansion site. So again, just make sure you're with a buddy. Don't, don't go alone. Um, you can close your cameras right inside the cemetery gate so we can get a nice clear view. Just don't drop your cameras. Pretty expensive stuff. <laughs> um, let's get your mindset on pirates, shall we? Have we heard anything else? Evan seems to be the most active at this point. He's like, no, I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's all good stuff. Do you guys see the burning gas lamp off in the distance down there? Down this way? Flickering green, yeah. orange light? That's the pirate. <coughs> you can't miss it when you're walking around downtown. It's got a big anchor on the front of it. So, don't go in. Somebody does live there, by the way. Don't go in his backyard looking for ghosts. He also gets pissed off. Don't ask me how I know these things. I just know. So, uh, but, yeah, I know, right? I can't. I hear you humming down there. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm glad you're not my kid. I mean, drowning you every day. Um, but anyway, so that's where Blackbeard's men would come off their ships. And they would actually have a place to stay and meet with a few ladies. Um, and they dug a tunnel underneath that pirate house, going one block away to Dock Street Theater. Dock Street Theater at the time was a poorhouse, a playhouse, and a hotel called Clancher's. So the whorehouse was obviously an attraction because we're talking about pirates. But the playhouse is one of the main reasons why they went there because pirates were our first stagehands. They would actually go over there to work in between bartering with our locals. So again, there's a lot of rumors about that tunnel, but I will tell you for certain it has been filled in in the 1990s. 
why the hell it took us so long to fill in that tunnel is beyond me. We're below sea level, so I'm sure it's flooded all the time. Some of the rumors include that Blackbeard actually carried some of his treasure there. I fall BS on that one. We all know that that treasure is in North Carolina, not South Carolina. If you know any of your pirate history, that's where Blackbeard was killed. Um, the other part of it is that it went all the way out to White Point Garden, right at the tip of the peninsula. <coughs> I kind of call BS on that one as well, because that's a long way for pirates to be digging through. I don't care if it's a full crew of, of 40 to 60 men, that's a long way to be digging in early 1700s in our heat. Um, they say they did that so that, they, that way they can actually sneak into the city. Um, there was really no sneaking into the city. Your ship is right there. How are you going to sneak in? So I kind of followed that one out. Um, but you guys are all getting a little sleepy and weary on me, so I'm going to get you back and walk your butts again. We're going to go across the street and put you all back to work. So come on, Jillian. <laughs> it's all about you. I can't talk back. I'm going to gets a little crazy and this way other tours can actually pass by tell them a little bit of history about the powder magazine and they can move on um, after I get through the history here um, I will spread us all out again cameras are free to go to the front of the powder magazine if you'd like or over to the sim the cemetery that we just discussed because um, we will be spending a good 10 minutes here you know based on trying to find that so let's get into it this is the gunpowder magazine so that's those are not crosses on that building those are earthquake bolts if you're unfamiliar with earthquake bolts, basically they're turnbuckles. If we have another earthquake like what we did in 1886, which we have <coughs> a major one anyway, they say you can turn those turnbuckles and it'll straighten the building back up again. It's a great idea, it just doesn't work. So I bring that up because these are the first set of earthquake bolts that Charleston actually put in. Why? Because this is the oldest government building in South Carolina. It was finished in 1713. It held gunpowder for seven different wars. The Civil War was its last serving. We talked about the Charlestown walls earlier back in Lodge Alley, y'all remember that? Where the garage is now is where the wall stood. It went up the street past the powder magazine, <coughs> started going south behind me towards the battery. It locks the powder magazine right into the corner. If it gets attacked from a revolutionary warship or a pirate ship from three blocks away, those cannonballs are going to have a hard time getting through the 32-inch thick walls. So let's pretend that it does and it blows up the gunpowder. There's sand in the roof from the early 1700s during its construction. It's supposed to go up in the air with the explosion and fall to put out the fire for gunpowder. Another great idea, but that doesn't work either. How do we know that? We had another powder magazine closer to the battery. It did get struck, basically, because it's closer to the, you know, to the wall. Um, and sand went up, the building burned to the ground. It doesn't exist. This one's just never been attacked. We're here because during the construction of this building, it's what we call a familiar. So it's kind of like using a toy to attract a child ghost. This building was here and being constructed at the same time that Anne Bonny traveled to Charleston. It took 10 years to make this building. Is that something for government? Small, small building, 10 years? No, not at all. I'll answer for you. So, 1703 to 1713 is the construction era, but our story begins in 1708. Back in Ireland, a young lady moves here by the name of Anne Cormac. She's with her father and her mom. Is everybody with me so far? There's a couple of twists in this one. Yes. The three of them are running away from his wife. Got that? I'm mad with you. Just ask me. <laughs> so, they land in Georgetown. Dad buys a plantation. Mom <coughs> dies pretty quickly. That means he has to send young Anne down here to Charlestown to sell anything from the plantation, keep things afloat for the family. So it's just her and her dad at this point because mom is gone. Back home in Ireland, Anne was kind of a badass. They say she actually killed one of her slaves when she was like 10 or 12 years old with a knife to the belly. Sorry, Evan. This happened to be next to me. Um, but with that said, I want you to keep that mentality of who Anne was throughout the rest of the story. We're going to fast forward. Building's done in 13 and 1715. Pirates are coming through town. Anne's pretty stoked. She falls in love pretty quickly. Pirate number one, James <coughs> Bonnie. And I'll see where this is going because I've already mentioned names twice this time, at least. They run away. Dad doesn't approve because he's a filthy pirate. So they run away to Jamaica. They get married. And Cormac becomes Anne Bonnie, the most famous female pirate of the Golden Age. And her career started right here. When they get there, 
Australian James Bonding, her new husband, is not the swashbuckling rum drinking Captain Jack Sparrow that we all come to know and love, right? He is actually a privateer. He's a spy for the British, and he's a coward in her eyes. This is not who she wants. A few years later, she falls in love again. Guy number two. Keeping track over there? Okay. <laughs> I thought you were looking at your toenail. So, guy number two, his name is John Rackham, a.k.a. Calico Jack. We're going to call him Jack through the rest of the story because there's way too many J names for you guys to remember. Jack is easy to remember. So, <coughs> his own ship. She wants to be part of it. You can't put a girl on a crew. Girls curse pirate ships. So he makes a deal with her. You dress like a guy, hide your gender, and you can be a part of the crew, but you're going to be a female in my quarters. She's the captain. That's how it's going to go. She's okay with this because back home in Ireland, Dad used to hide her as a boy, cross-dressing her to keep her away from his wife. So that way the wife didn't find out about her. Now, being a female in his quarters, you can obviously put two and two together, adults, all of you, um, but she's eventually going to get pregnant. You cannot have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. <laughs> Somebody's going to figure out that she's a female. He drops her off in Cuba. Go have the baby. These are friends of mine. We'll help you out. Come back later. We'll figure it out together. She goes and has the baby, but returns with no baby. We have no idea what happened to this kid. I just caught your attention. I saw it. <coughs> so, she's also dressed like a female when she returns. While she was away giving birth to Jack's first child, Captain Calico Jack, he captured another pirate crew, and they're down below deck. When Anne returns dressed as a female, this makes Jack pretty mad. Anne's going to go flirting with the captured pirate crew down below deck, guy number three. Guy number three turns out to be female, dressed like a guy to be part of the pirate crew that Calico Jack's kept. <laughs> Damn. Two females doing the exact same thing on the exact same ship, which is uncanny all by itself. Her and this young lady, whose name is Mary Reed, become friends, possibly lovers, we'll never know for certain, and she convinces Mary to become part of the crew. The British find out where they are, they send their entire fleet of ships to come take out one pirate ship. Think about that for a second. <coughs> That's a lot of ships coming after one, but Anne and Mary are the only two not drunk enough to come up and fight with their one bullet flintlocks. The ship's obviously going to get taken. As they're being arrested, Anne looks at her captain and beau, Jack, and says, you should have fought like a man instead of being hanged like a dog. But the word dog shows up here quite a bit. The judge wants to see the two men that fought back some violence after he's already tried Calico Jack and the drunken crew that wouldn't come up and fight. So they're dead and gone. The two ladies go in front. The judge thinks they're men. They reveal their gender. He doesn't care. They're still pirates. He's still going to hang them. We plead our bellies was the last thing they said, claiming to be pregnant. You can't hang a pregnant woman at 17 points. It's illegal. This is fine. He delays the hanging, sends them both back to jail. Dad is still here in the Charlestown area with his Irish money. He brings Anne back home. She remarries. That's guy number four, husband number two. Yes, we're going to count Mary Reed in that group of four because we never know for sure. Um, she has four kids <coughs> and dies at the age of 84. I know, all of my stories end in a very abrupt death. That's what we do here. But what happened to Mary Reed? She died a year later, 1721, in the Jamaican jail from whatever pirates die from in a Jamaican jail. I'm sure it was scurvy and bumpy and gross and whatever else you guys want to come up with. So, I left out two things for you on purpose. You all know what you're doing with your devices. You're getting much better at it, by the way. Um, so, I left out the name of Calico Jack's ship. You can ask what that is, if Anne is here. And you can ask the names of Anne Bonnie's parents. That would be the father and the mistress. Everything else is fair game. Why? Because it's a pirate story and there's a lot of holes in it. So, again, we never know all of those complete answers. So, again, do we get a lot of things? Yes. Do I get consistent things? So-so. It's a 50-50 shot. I told you at the beginning of the story that people have passed out on my tours in the past. Here's one that's actually relevant to the story I just told you. Back in September, I brought my group back here, about the same size. The kid next to me goes white as a ghost. Yes, that pun was intended. And I have to pick him up by his armpit. He's about to hit his head on the ground. His boyfriend picks him up from the other armpit on the other side of him. And we get him over to that brick wall over there. There's a little, like, sitting step. Um, and I get him to sit down. He's starting to feel better. I send the boyfriend over for a bottle of water. He comes back. I then tell the story. It's important to know they didn't know the story yet. Afterwards, I spread everybody out with their devices, and they pull me aside. Nick, we have to tell you something. I'm like, what's going on? We are two transgender males. Oh. I have two females dressed like males, just like Anne and Mary, on the pirate ship, on my tour. So it made complete sense to them as to why one of them nearly passed out and hit his head on the ground the minute we entered the space. So these are the things that I look for when you guys tell me you have headaches, you're not feeling well, heart's pounding, that kind of thing. It's very important. It, and I'm not gonna, I didn't have to call the EMT that night, which is, that's a good thing, because I've had to call them in the past. So just be very, very mindful of things. EMF readers, this is not a space where I get a whole lot of readings. If something pops up, I'm excited. However, keep in mind, there's two electrical poles on the corners of this lot. 
if you get close to them and or the bushes in the front, you're going to get a little bit of readings from the parking meters as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. You definitely want to get a lot of reports in here. Use your REM pods to search. Um, those of you, again, you're free to go up to the front of Powder Magazine and get some footage with cameras and lasers. Um, so as far as lasers go, make sure they stay on the ground in the front lawn. <coughs> those are apartments. Oh, now we have something going on. Here. Yeah, wow. I don't have anything on mine. Mine's zero. I'm just watching for a pattern, and now we stop. That you're watching us. Don't, don't be <laughs> looking right? at us. You made it self-conscious. Maybe. These are pirates. I doubt it. <laughs> so, that's Cowards. definitely, like I said, I, I've been watching that for the first time we've been here, and I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah. That's the first time. So, that's definitely a 15-year-old house. Yeah, mine's from zero. That's a whole bunch. Um, definitely probably but your power. REM pod is always active in here, just so you know. So ask for specific colors. Let's spread out. Let's have some fun. I'm going to follow up with Miss Ann first because I want to see that word list in its entirety. Um, if anybody else wants to see it, by all means, hang out. Okay. Let's do it, Bonnie. I'm going to go this way. I'll follow you anywhere. Go around. You look possessed. Mm -hmm. You look possessed. Yeah. Well, I can't keep my arms. It's okay, you're doing great. What? <gasps> These poor people are gonna have such a gross recording of me coughing. You know this is recording you, right? <laughs> They're all gonna hear that bad joke now. Do we go across the street too?
Your ghost is funny. It's got jokes. Do you want to go across the street with us too? Do you want to go across the street with us too? Do you want to go over there with us? It's a like, song. Just, just that, just that specific. It's a song uh, uh, on the radio. Staying alive, just that last little bit, twice. Um, I think that eight, being 1832 is relevant. Give me one second. Um, I'm not going to say confirmed yes until I have yeah. you. Are we allowed to cross the street? Um, I haven't heard many numbers, and that one was real clear. Or um, should we wait? If you want to go over to the cemetery, you can. Um, again, just be with somebody, stay out of the way of the <coughs> I do want to look up that 1832 because I'm almost positive that is Somebody very died. significant. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't gotten any numbers, it's just been the red card. I think his little ghost likes him. Bring it home a bed of red. <laughs> wow. Calhoun died in 1832, and he's buried right there. Thanks, Ghosty. Very Clear as day. Yeah. Clear as day. So we'll see if anything else pops up around that. Like, that's pretty awesome stuff. Like, I'm stoked about that. That's probably the best thing we've had. Would there be any significance with the, like, staying alive thing, you know? That's I hilarious. That's the second yes. time. Really? That's so funny. But it's so the here, second time. So here's the reason. I told you, like, Calhoun's not very well liked around here. Um, during the BLM riots that we had, they actually ripped down the John Calhoun monument that was a hundred feet in the air that used to sit at Marion Square. Wow. So if he's still pissed off that they took down his statue, he is staying alive. Not to mention there was a time capsule in the base of that monument. That was a rumor that was supposed that was supposed to be there. It was actually there. And there was a, a piece of <coughs> Calhoun's hair in there. There was a lock of his hair. Oh wow. And I mean it was that exact those two words. It was the uh oh uh, <coughs> Twice, two different times. Well, they three, say that staying time. alive a thousand times. You probably went through a full sweep of it. Yeah, um, yeah. There's not many lyrics in that song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It is like this is what I have. Huh? Didn't move Do you want to go? And they went to blue. <laughs> across the street. You want to wait here? There's another survivor here. Is there? Um, tell me again, because I think I missed some of the stuff over across the street. So I got here for life, and then you you heard something else over there. Uh, there was a uh, <coughs> it was as soon as uh, Carol said she felt better. It's a miracle, but I don't know. If it's, <laughs> That's a funny. Ghost. It's something, huh? Kind of interesting. A funny ghost. I'm gonna Google that. Like, 
you get all the data back tomorrow. Like that's that's the fun part. I'm excited to yeah. sit through all that. Yeah, this Because you're her sending thing, it to me. She yeah, uh, she <laughs> loves that. I'm sorry I got distracted. My camera. What's the on. dynamic? How does everybody know each other here? Family? No They're family. all family. Okay. And I'm dating him. Oh. <laughs> They're those two are family. She's a friend. I'm her boy. Yeah. This is my daughter. Okay. That's her best friend. I just like saying it. And her boy. I'm the only one that has light. And yeah, I, I, I saw his so mouth go like this. It's very interesting. I have non white people on my table. That's nice. Okay. Yes. The <laughs> night before, <coughs> I will normally get that person's nationality and or their name. Um, so you'll have to look at the previous data because I haven't asked you what your ethnicity is um, to see if anything actually popped up with that. Um, sometimes okay. it shows up at the same tour, like during the investigation. And yeah. when I say, like, I've had Filipinos on the tour from Florida, it'll say Filipino and then Jose or Luis or whatever his name is. I'll have both things right away. Like, it is the craziest thing with nationalities of people of non white. And it pops up on the tour? Wow. And it's normally in the digital word list, the one that Ann has. It's, it's always in that one. It's the craziest thing. Mm hmm. You should look it up when he sends you the data. Well, you're going to get a link, too. She's gonna I know, but she loves this. <laughs> I don't want to steal her thunder. <laughs> if I find it before, With that voice, she's going to punch me. Anyone's thunder. So <laughs> yeah. what, what, is, what is your ethnicity? If you don't mind me what do you think? I don't know. I'm not going to do that. So you have to guess. <laughs> you have to guess mine, then. How about that? French. No. Italian. No. Am I getting closer? Are you Jewish? No. No. Go on. Greek. Getting closer. Is Roman. I'm Ukrainian. Really? Wow. wow. <laughs> so. All right, get Your turn. Right My first thought was Hawaiian or something. No. no. <laughs> I like it. Then I don't know. Okay, I'm an old ma. Damn. <laughs> Sorry, I'm recording this. Has a lot to do with it. <laughs> with her ethnicity. If you know anything about adoption. I'm I don't know anything about adoption. I'm <laughs> Chinese. Okay. The Chinese for She's a long old. time you had to be <coughs> forty or old to adopt. Really? From China. Wow. I didn't even know that. Maybe I'll find something against the corner. Yeah. Okay, let's go across the street. Yeah, go get some quick footage. It'll be fun. I'm actually going to head over to that wall, so <coughs> and that way you guys can drag them back. I'll give you guys a minute over with okay. a couple of minutes of footage, because they'll hang out over there. They're local. They're, they're going to be over there all night. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Um, you want to hang out with me while I go over there? Yeah, I'm going to go with them as well. Did he just... Yep. Okay. <coughs> I love it. I haven't made a friend. Go ahead, laser girl. Oops. It is, it's gorgeous. <coughs> okay. Where did the rest of the group go? That's not them. They just no. disappeared. Maybe aliens. Maybe they went around the
I'm gonna hire a new videographer. Because I'm doing a bad job. I could get on the top. I just did this part. It's back there. Did you see that? No. Oh, those are people on the other side. <laughs> They're way back there, though. <laughs> see where there's like. There's a little piece. No, I don't know if you see <laughs> that. <laughs> see the shadow of that. No, there's no, 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 no. So we'll just have to put some eggs in this card. I was just, did you, I was, I was going to go over there, I... Okay. <laughs> 